Ding Dong YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Jobless Coder and it is now the 29th day of these daily updates here in Sunshine Village. I'm not in Lake Louise now, but this is with regards to the fire that destroyed the Charleston building four weeks ago. It is Monday and it has now been exactly four weeks since my home was destroyed. And in the past four weeks, a lot has transpired. Um, frankly, it doesn't even feel like it's been four weeks. It feels like the time has just been non-existent and it's blown right by, but and yet it has been four weeks. I've now got a job at Sunshine Village as a dishwasher for Mad Trappers, and I've now worked my second shift, and everyone here seems to be very impressed with my work ethic. Um, I talked with some guys yesterday that are in the kitchen over at Whiskey Jack in Lake Louise, and it sounds like they're really struggling with one, only one dishwasher, which I knew they would be. You know, you, you can't run the kitchen on only one dishwasher. So now some of the cooks have been moved to dishwashing duty, which means that they're also short-staffed on cooks now. So it's not a great situation to be in for them over in Lake Louise. Um, but that's, I guess, not my problem anymore, really. Uh, I felt like today's topic of the video should be censorship. Why? Because I don't like it. And I find that those who are engaged in censorship are often coming from a position of bad faith, trying to prevent the spread of information, almost always the truth, just because they have personal motivations to do so. So, on the weekend, I was contacted by a reporter for CBC News. Now this is through a colleague of mine here in Sunshine Village who apparently their parents or something, I think she said her mom, works for CBC. Not as a journalist or reporter, just for the company. And so through her I got this guy's information and he contacted me and he's looking for someone to interview, preferably people in general, not just one person, uh, who are in the position of being stranded in a foreign country. Because this is the news story now, is that a whole bunch of foreign internationals without documentation have now been stranded in Canada. And everyone seems to be handling it a, a little bit differently. So I told them that I would ask and inquire about it and see if there was anyone that would want to go on camera. Now, there is a Facebook group for the victims of the Charleston fire, which I'm a part of. There's about, I think, 130 people in that group. And so I put out a post in the group today just stating that there was this reporter from CBC News and I gave his phone number and saying if anyone wants to tell their story then they're perfectly welcome to. The purpose of this group is to help people and to help them sometimes it requires telling their story on camera. And then I found out later today that that post of mine was deleted. I don't know who the admins are for this group, frankly it doesn't even matter who specifically deleted this, but it feels to me, now I'm not stating this as a fact, but this is what it feels like to me, is that there's a bad faith effort on their part to prevent people from being helped. Look, for whatever reason there is a proclivity in people to believe that talking to journalists or going to the news and the press is like something that you should never ever do in any circumstance that it is somehow committing some transgression you know akin to committing treason basically and why honestly why I went and I talked to Global News and CTV News and both of those interviews if you have seen them I would say are fairly cordial actually you know, it's not just me ranting and saying fuck this and fuck that and screw these people and blah 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 blah. No, no, the interviews are not like that at all. And the other people that were in the interview in regards to the CTV news interview, Beth Levin, the other girl that was interviewed who said that she was from the UK and all she had left was photocopies of her document. She didn't even have the documents. You know, what you saw of her on camera was after myself and her boyfriend Gavin and the journalist, the reporter, Kevin Fleming, uh, spent probably three to four minutes tr just trying to calm her down because she was exceedingly upset. And rightfully so. She had every fucking right to be upset because of what happened. And so, you know, she's dropping F-bombs every third word and stuff. But we calmed her down and she went on camera 
and what you saw of her was fairly cordial. Now that's not something the public is going to know just seeing that report, but I would say, you know, people have the absolute God-given right to be upset over what happened. And the news is not going to present that side of the argument. They're not just going to film people ranting and raving and dropping F-bombs. And so the interviews are fairly cordial. So what you may not know is that from that interview, first of all, it helped me to get a job here because the people at Sunshine Village saw that interview and they said, we have to help and we have to fix this. And it led to the easiest job interview of my life. It was just one question. Are, are you from Lake Louise? Yes, we will hire you. That simple. And that was because I went on camera. So if, if no one wants to go on camera, that's perfectly fine. You know, if people just decide that they feel that they've said their piece and that they need to move on, then that is their choice. And then there's no story to report. But at least give them the option. And instead of just, you know, removing the post because, oh, well, we don't want people to find out the, from the reporter and tell their story and that might look bad on, I don't know. You know, I'm just making assumptions here. There could be another reason that they deleted the post, but it just feels to me like a bad faith effort to run um, damage control, really. And if someone somewhere is concerned about damage control, frankly, whose fault is that? You know? <laughs> You know, they, they fired 25% of the staff who just weeks earlier lost everything in the house fire. Whose fault is that? The justifications that they gave for me and the other people that were fired still frankly don't make a whole lot of sense. What you won't know from watching the news article is that a good number of the people that got fired on that day had just moved in to those new brand new trailer units three days before. And so some of them were in the hotels. All I can assume is that they had already known prior who it was that they were going to be firing and letting go. And there was a date given to move out of the hotels. So we're gonna move them out of the hotels and into the trailer units just long enough for the day where everyone gets fired and then, then they get kicked out. But the justification they were given was that there was not enough housing. And for them, it made absolutely no fucking sense because they were like, what do you mean there's not enough housing? I just moved in the day before <laughs> for some people and then for me it didn't make sense either to tell me that there was not enough housing because we were told here at Sunshine Village when we arrived that we had this place arranged until at least September so the argument that was made where we have to uh, fire you because there's not enough housing well what do you mean I was already here and the housing situation was already under control and so you know, at least they could have waited until September when the housing would have ended before they let me go, but they didn't do that. They gave me five days to get out. And so, honestly, what was I supposed to do but go to the press, you know? Was I just supposed to say nothing and just disappear quietly into the eternal void of joblessness, you know? Saturday would have come. I wouldn't have had anything to look to for the future. My parents would have come and got me. I would have moved back home and, you know, spent the next two years of however long of my life living on my mother's couch again. And no one would have any idea where or what I came of it, you know? I don't have to do these daily vlog updates. I, I do because I want to share my story, but I could just say nothing and disappear quietly into the void and then that would be my life. But I said, no, fuck this. I'm going to tell my story and I'm going to tell the truth. And so it just feels like a bad faith effort to prevent other people who maybe don't have that voice to, if they have no other options and they haven't found anything to, to do, some people they're going and staying with friends and family here in Canada, you know, what you won't know from just the news article is that Beth is going with her boyfriend to her, his parents' place in Manitoba. I believe they've already left now. And so what you also won't know from that news article is that not only did it help me to get a job, but there was not one but two individuals that contacted Keith Fleming after, not Keith, Kevin Fleming of the CTV News. They contacted the news after they saw that story and both of them wanted to offer Beth a place to stay until she got back on her feet. And that is the type of generosity that you really and frankly can only find here in Canada. People, absolute random strangers lending out a hand 
and had she not gone on camera and told her story, that would have not been an option on the table. Now for her, she already had other plans to go back with her boyfriend, so I gave Gavin the phone number for these individuals so that he could contact them as a matter of courtesy to let them know what it was that she was doing. Because it's exceedingly generous for random strangers to open up their home to someone like that. And that's the type of things that happen when you go on camera and you tell your story on the news. And for some people, that's the only way that they can get the message out and find support like that. So I think it's very bad faith that they would prevent other people from telling their story just to cause, you know, run damage control potentially. So, you know, I don't know. I just, I shake my head, right? You know, I went on the news. It was good. It led me to get a job interview. It led opportunities to Beth to stay somewhere where she may not have had another place to go. And if someone else wanted to talk on the CBC news, you know, the, there's a national news. They also covered the story of the fire when it initially happened. And so it's uh, understandable that they would want to do a follow-up story too. Global news and CTV news are just local to Calgary, whereas CBC news is nationwide. And at this point, it is an international news story that several people have been terminated and left stranded in a foreign country without documents, which I don't necessarily think is right, especially given that, like I said before, several of the people fired had a arrangements, they had already moved in to the new modular units, and I was up here at Sunshine told that I could stay until September, and then I was given five days to get out. So that's what I did, is I went to the press, and if people want to be upset at me, or they want to view me in a negative way, because I went and I talked about it, when oh, you shouldn't be talking about it, then, you know, sorry, you know, I did what I did, because I had to, because I didn't know what else I was supposed to do. And if that was the wrong decision, then, I mean, I have another job now thanks to that decision that I made. So thank fucking God I went and talked to the press. Because the alternative could be me just sitting here on my mother's couch right now, ranting and raving into the camera with virtually nothing to talk about. So, you know, when I phoned my mom and told her that I got a job because they found the news story and I said oh that was me in the news story she broke down and cried because she'd been praying for days that I would have something lined up that I wasn't just going to move back into her house and become another bum like I had been for the last two years of my life trying to find something to do you know this was the first opportunity I had in basically four and a half years and two of those years living on her couch to move out here and after three weeks of moving out here my house burned to the ground and that's nobody's fault but Tim Peterson but the way the resort has handled it since by firing people it just it feels so dirty because it's not uncommon that uh, organizations will let go of entire departments of people you know at a single time that's pretty cut and dry when it comes to business but it's not just the story of people that got fired it's people that got fired who literally can't get a job anywhere else because their visas are burned and they can't even get on a plane to go home because their passports are gone and they have no no money no bank cards and now what are what are they supposed to do honestly that's the story so yeah thank you for listening to my rant i don't like censorship and I'm not going to stand for censorship, and I'm going to call it out whenever it happens. So if that upsets someone, I'm sorry. You know, I don't like censorship. That's the cut and dry of it. So I'm going to end the video now, and I'm going to thank everyone who stays tuned to these daily updates. And, you know, if you are someone who does want to talk on camera, you can do so in Zoom. You don't have to be in person. Um, just make a comment on the video and I will send you the phone number for this reporter because the opportunity to interview with him is still on the table so I understand. Um, other than that, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it out with your friends and let them know what's going on here in the Bow Valley area. And until then, I'll see you in tomorrow's update. Thank you for watching and bye.